Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook with me, Patrick Munley, for week commencing the 24th of May. Uh, the dollar continues to slip and is less than 1% away now from lows of the year. And it's quite remarkable given the US 10-year yields have risen 70 basis points and a number of Fed participants want to be talking tapering sooner rather than later. Yet the weakness in the dollar is a large part of the core of the Fed unhurried about the need to withdraw stimulus and recovery stories elsewhere in the world. These core views are unlikely to be challenged in the week ahead um, because this US data calendar is relatively light. Here, the focus will be on any possible upward revisions to first quarter 21 GDP, but that may be some softer home sales and durable goods orders data. We will also see May's advanced US trade balance and a $92 billion deficit is expected. Uh, it's quite a large hole to fill when the US exceptionalism of the 2018-2020 period is being challenged by overseas recovery and US real rates remain very negative. The week ahead will also see a variety of Fed speakers who largely sit on the dovish end of the spectrum. Away from the US calendar, the market will be keep close watch on volatility in cryptocurrencies and tech stocks, as well as developments in the renminbi. Any signs of independent renminbi strength could lend weight to the notion that the PBOC wants a stronger currency to insulate against imported commodity price rises. From a technical perspective, dollar index uh, is carving out this uh, this wave five now. Whilst we trade below the trend line here, currently 9050 area, I'm looking for an extension through the prior year to date lows 89.20 down to an ideal 87.50. Uh, we could extend further to test the descending trend line support down to 86.70, but I'm looking for uh, completion of this major wave one into this 87.50, 86.20 area. And from there, I think we can start to think about a corrective phase developing. Um, to the upside, if we do take out the channel resistance at the 9050, then I think we will uh, we should see a test of 9130 to 9150 before we trade lower again. Uh, Euro dollar continues to hold up well, and the key story here is probably the rotation to European asset markets as confidence in the recovery intensifies. In local currency terms, Euro stocks has outperformed the S&P and flow data suggests US investors are increasingly interested in Eurozone equity ETFs. Somewhat surprisingly, the Treasury bund spread has also been narrowing since a wide of 200 basis points in late March, a move uh, which could discourage some of the reverse Yankee issuance which had been weighing on the euro. For the week ahead, the highlights of the Eurozone data calendar will be the May readings for consumer and business confidence. We'll also see the May reading for German EFO, which risks come in a little softer based on manufacturing PMIs. The only part of the week will also see a special European Council meeting. Top of the agenda here is climate change and the EU's plan to implement a net reduction of greenhouse gases of at least 55% by 2030. Increasing interest from the corporate treasury community in the hedging of carbon emission allowances will see much focus on the EU uh, does with its allowances and whether the spot price will surpass the recent peak of uh, 56 euros per metric ton. From a technical perspective, euro dollar is continuing to grind up here in a, what could be an ending diagonal pattern. As uh, 121.50 supports, I'm looking for a test and breach of year-to-date highs before we see any type of meaningful pullback. Uh, to the downside, if we do take out the trendline support here at 121.30, look for a pullback to test initially the uh, descending trendline resistance to now act as support at 120.50. If we fail here, then we'd be looking for uh, support down to 119.60. But the base case for now is, uh, is a grind higher here to test, uh, take out the prior uh, highs at uh, 123.50. In terms of uh, the dollar yen, US Treasury yields have stalled around the 1.6 to 1.65% area, and there does not seem to be a clear catalyst in the week ahead as to what will drive them higher. This has taken some of the steam out of the dollar yen rally, and indeed, if any currency pair showed a hint of reacting to last week's crypto crash, it was the dollar yen. Let's see whether the dollar starts taking any notice of the US trade deficit this coming week. The Japanese calendar is really quiet in the coming week. Uh, we've been hearing more about foreign rotation into Japanese equities, but so far there is no evidence of that in the Japanese Ministry of Finance weekly portfolio flow data. 
So let's see this week if that changes. From a technical perspective, Dolly Yen is holding on to uh, this trendline support here coming in at the uh, 108.60 area. If it can hold here, then it has an equality objective at 110.78. However, if we take out 108.30 as support, then I look for an extension to the downside to test 106.50. Sterling managed to shake off the recent uh, dollar rebound quite well and in line with the other European FX, it now continues grinding higher. The strong UK May PMIs have underlined the optimistic case for the UK economic outlook and it is clearly tail it's clearly a tailwind for Sterling. Although uh, domestic data are unlikely to prove much of a boost in this week, it's quite uh, it's a really quite weak on the domestic uh, calendar front with the only uh, print of note being the April UK public finance numbers on Tuesday, and that's unlikely to have much of an impact on Sterling. Uh, Sterling like, is holding on to trendline support here at the 141 area. As it does so, anticipate a breach of the prior highs at 142.50 uh, to extend as up into the monthly R3, 143.30 is the next upside objective. However, if we take out trendline support here at the 141 area, then I can see a pullback to uh, the 140 as support before we make another leg uh, to the upside. Lastly, uh, the Aussie has received mixed signals from the data side and the commodity side uh, last week. Unemployment fell to 5.5% in March, but the number of people employed actually shrank. All in all, it was broadly positive rees as it shrugged off the concerns about the impact of the end of JobKeeper wage subsidy scheme. Ultimately, it may have applied a little more pressure on the RBA to sound less dovish, although there are no speeches or public meetings due soon. So we will have to wait longer for any potential change in rhetoric. On the commodity side, iron ore showed signs of recovery at the start of the week, but then followed other commodities lower and broke decisively below the 180 US dollar metric ton. It's still trading at very high levels compared to historical standards, although markets will remain highly focused on any signs of slump in prices that has further to go. For the Aussie, this remains, along with other developments in the Aussie-China uh, trade relationships, the main downside risk. From a technical perspective, the Australian dollar holding its trendline support here, as it does hold this 77 level, we look for an extension higher to test monthly range resistance at 79.60 and then the prior cycle highs up to 80. If we fail to hold the trendline support, then look for a move back to test the 76 level of support. If we don't find support there, buyers don't step in, then we could trade lower to test uh, 75 area as, uh, as the next level of support. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 24th of May. As always, traders join me on Thursdays at 1pm for a deep dive into uh, all asset classes. And uh, as always, I wish you all the best of luck for the week ahead.